Hey folks, welcome back. I'm your pottery professor and uh, I'm out here inside my garage studio uh, working on my table saw. I use my table saw as a work table and I use it as a saw. It does uh, double duty here inside my shop. My shop is in my garage and you can see some of my pots on the shelf behind me. I got my potter's wheel over here on the floor. Uh, I was working last night, made a nice bowl, I burnished it up, it's nice and polished. One of the cool things about being uh, at home and quarantined, or I'm not quarantined, but just uh, isolating, and uh, is I'm able to uh, actually focus on things kind of slowly and not in a hurry. Um, and I don't have to commute so much. Um, one of the things I do miss is my students, and I miss having you all around inside my classroom and showing you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna get on the wheel eventually and give you some videos on the wheel just to entertain you a little bit. This one's been burnished and polished. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to try to fire it inside a primitive firing, what we call a pit firing with some sawdust. See if I can fire it without an actual kiln. Um, and so I'll bring in, I'll be bringing that to you in YouTube land shortly. So I need it to dry out first. Everything's got to be dry before it can be fired, right? Or else it's going to blow up. So in the meantime, I've got to give you a new assignment. Uh, we have about three weeks left of this semester. Uh, the semester officially ends on May the 8th for us. And today is, let's see, Friday, April the 17th. So we've got a couple more due dates to come, about three more for us, I think. And so our next assignment for my ceramics classes will be doing some coil bowls. And I've got a couple examples that I've uh, begun and I wanna show them to you, show you how we're gonna get started. Um, one of the easiest ways for you to do this at home is to roll out a bunch of coils. And I've done that. Um, I can go over rolling out the coils real briefly. Got some clay here. And what you want is uh, a table area that you can work on. Hopefully you won't mess it up too much. Uh, maybe if you have a folding table um, that you might use for uh, you know special occasions, you might get something out like that. Um, or you could put down um, some cloth or canvas, but I tend to just roll, let me get that out of the camera, I tend to just roll these out so I can get some nice even coils to work with. Now they don't have to be even, there can actually be variety to them, they can be tapered, it all depends on what kind of effect you want to get. And so I'm going to roll this guy up to the front here. and. Well, I've got a whole bunch of coils here already made, so I don't have to roll them out as I work. Put my sleeves back a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how to make a bowl. First, I want to show you one that I started earlier today for you as a demonstration. And I'm also going to show you a, uh, send you a link with the assignment uh, for my students. I'll be sending you a link with... Uh, some Pinterest pages which have some good pins on them um, of some coil uh, coil built bolts and so what I've done here is I've made a whole bunch of coils and also some little balls of clay and pushed them all together that you see right here um, and I haven't quite pushed them together yet I've laid them out into a design and then I'm gonna push them together so I saved that part for you um, I spared you the actual part of taking all the coils and put them together. I'm going to do that a little bit on one of these though. Um, you'll see what I used here was a bowl for my shape. And mine is actually a handmade bowl. It's one of my own bowls, um, like a soup bowl. And in that I placed um, just a plastic grocery bag. And it works really good as a release from that bowl. If you don't use some kind of release, your clay will likely get stuck inside your, your form, which is gonna be a bowl. Um, if it gets stuck in there, it won't come out, uh, obviously. Uh, you could use like a little mixing bowl. This is a mixing bowl that you would find in your kitchen. It has a, a decent shape to it that I could use as a mold um, for this technique. And that's the technique that I recommend. Um, and what you would do is take your plastic grocery bag and just line it on the inside like so and then 
you would start to press your coils down, starting at the bottom, working your way up towards the rim. Um, and I laid all mine out first, and I saved the pressing part for now. So I wanted to show you how that works. Now we finally have a nice day out here inside my garage studio. For the last week, the weather's been on and off. We've had some rain, a lot of rain and wind. We had 60 mile an hour gusts earlier in the week. Um, it's been cold. Right now I've got a F-18 Hornet, Super Hornet flying over. Pretty regular down here in my neighborhood. I live pretty close to Oceana Naval Air Station. That is the sound of freedom that you hear, folks. If you don't live in Virginia Beach and you haven't heard that sound, that's freedom right there. That's our Navy. Oceana Naval Air Station is a master jet base for the U.S. Navy here on the East Coast. So what I'm doing here is I'm pressing these coils together. I hadn't done this yet. I just laid them down. If you just lay them down and you don't press them together some, um, they won't stick together. And you need them to stick together. So it's really good actually if your clay um, is nice and soft and fresh when you're doing this. You don't want hard, stiff clay when you're making your coils because they won't stick together as well. And if that happens, it falls apart and then that's no good. So I'm gonna press these together like so. I'm trying to hold it up so that you can see it. Um, I'm doing this so that I can pop this out and show you the result. And without having a studio audience, there won't be any clapping or cheering. Thankfully right now, we don't have the uh, leaf blower going on. My good buddy down the street, one of my very good friends down there with his leaf blower, he just did his lawn, does it every Friday. And uh, even though he's about four doors down, uh, you can still hear that leaf blower quite loud. I want um, uh, Elon Musk and Tesla to work on uh, lawn equipment and maybe they could make some that is silent. Um, I know steel is starting to come out with uh, lawn equipment that's electric, but I want it silent. Maybe Dyson needs to do it. So see what I just did there? I took this nice bowl shape. This is a handmade bowl that I made. And here's what it looks like before I pull off. My plastic. Now, you could leave the plastic on there a little bit longer and allow this to slowly start to cure. That's when it starts to stiffen. If it's really soft clay and you pull it off right away, you could have a problem. And I'm a little worried about that, so I'm going to put my hand in there to kind of support it. But here, that stuck there a little bit, you can see the design left behind by the coils. And um, I have a nice rounded bottom for the bowl shape. So let me set that over here. Um, eventually, I probably would have to flatten it out so it stays there, or I could add a foot, I could add another coil to a foot, but now's not the time. It's so soft. In fact, pulling it out was a little premature, but I wanted you to be able to see it. Um, I also used a different um, technique uh, one I hadn't tried before we got another hornet coming hang on I gotta go get it off the grass sorry I had to leave and that was not a hornet that was a Hawkeye that's a radar plane keeps a watch over the carriers and such so what I did here is I also did the coil technique. I had this out in the sun actually, um, kind of stiffening up and maybe a little too much because I haven't been watching it while I was setting up for this video and the sun's really strong today. So it's nice and warm and it dried out some of the coils. But I kind of wanted it a little bit stiff so I can show you what I did. Um, I actually used a uh, plastic mold that you would find in a kitchen but I found in, I believe, a thrift store. And it's shaped like a, plush, a, a fish, but it's made of plastic. And I have sprayed it with um, a no-stick spray. Good old Walmart Super Tech lubricant you would use around your garage. It's like a no-stick spray, don't cook with it, but it's good for clay. 
and I sprayed it onto the plastic or else the clay, if I pressed it directly onto it, is likely to stick to it and it might not come off, but it came off real easy. And what I did um, about a half an hour ago while I was setting up for this is I lay down all these coils and then I rolled them together with my pony roller. Um, and just rolled over top of them and squished all the ones on the back together. And that's what you see in the front. And all that patterning is from the design I put into it while I was building it. So let's talk about design for just a little bit. I mean, you could just put one coil on top of the other and over and over again, and it would just repeat itself over and over again. But too much repetition could be kind of boring. And sometimes we want things like variety. See, these things are part of design, having rhythm, repetition, variety, lines, shapes, all that is part of our design that we're gonna be using on these pieces. And you'll, you'll see here that I use some variety of different thicknesses of the coil and lengths, um, different curves. And what I would probably do at this point is go around and maybe trim some of it, but um, I'm gonna just let this uh, rest a little bit longer. Set it over here. So this is a little fish plastic thingy that I got from a thrift store and I thought oh that would be cool and originally I intended it for slabs but I thought let's try it with coils and you see the result it's kind of nice I like it uh, I'm gonna set it aside over here and I'm gonna kind of do a reverse of the bowl you know here I have this bowl shape and I built down into it but what if I build on top of a little round form? And I actually have one. This is like a hemisphere. It's half of a, a wooden ball that we cut in half in the studio. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you looked around and say, I don't have one of those. But you could use other things around. I'm looking across the garage and across the garage I see a basketball. And you could actually build on top of a basketball if you could keep it from rolling around. So how would you keep it from rolling down? Maybe put it inside a stable bowl. I don't know. Something like that, keep it from rolling around. You could try it. Um, what I have here is my little turntable. You might not have one of those either, but I wanted to kind of build in the reverse so you could see, you know, how I might um, design um, into the pots. And again, I'm working upside down, and it's not always the easiest way to work. Um, I'm not used to working this way, but I am used to demonstrating this way. Um, it's not how I would normally work here in my studio. So that's where it becomes a little more difficult. Um, but, you know, talk about difficult. Uh, it's not as difficult as some things could be right now. I imagine. Um, I have to say we all have it pretty easy uh, if we're healthy and well and we're just at home doing our schoolwork. Um, imagine the uh, healthcare professionals out there on the front lines where uh, people are getting sick and they have to take care of them. They're uh, having a tougher time than us. So when you think you got it tough, uh, it's not so bad. We can do this. So I'm just kind of building some variety into my coil shapes. And I can try out a couple other things too if I want. You know, like I could you know, spiral these up a little bit like so. And let me sit right here. You know, one thing you'll hear me say in my videos is have fun with it. Um, you know, one of the reasons I really like working with art um, is because it, it's fun. Um, it was always fun for me. To be an artist and to uh, to make art, it was like play, you know. And I'm just a big kid, and 
I found something I could do very good and be happy and have fun. Hope you do too. Something worth looking for anyway. And one of the things I really like a lot about my job, here goes another hornet, uh, is being with my students. I learn from them. They learn from me. It's a great relationship, and I do miss my students. And God, I hope that we're back in school in fall. don't think that an online education is a, a great education. Um, I think the interaction that I had with people when I was in college was so positive to my development as a young person that I wanted my own sons to go away and um, go to college away from home and live with other people and learn. And to me, that's so important. And it's hard to imagine, you know, not doing that this fall. So I hope we're back. I hope you want to come back too. I'd be bored to death if I had to stay here and make videos and teach at home all the time. I know some people like it, but I don't. I'd rather be with my students now. So look, I, I made this piece really quick. Now, usually I'd be doing this inside of a bowl, uh, but I had this sphere around here in the, in the studio, and I thought, well, that would be good for a demonstration purpose to show you kind of what to do. So let's see if I can actually get it off of the wood. I didn't spray it with mold release, the, uh, the no stick spray as I showed you before. There's different ways you can kind of smooth it down. You can do it with your hand. You could try it with the roller. Um, I like the hand better. I have a little more control, but I'm going to try this. I got the turntable, so that helps a lot. You probably don't have one of those at your home, but if you're an artist out there in YouTube land, you know, and you don't have one of these, you're going to be like, oh, I want one of those. This is the Shimpo model, and they're about 50 bucks. They're made of um, very heavy uh, cast iron, and they have a great bearing in them. You just spin them, and they just go. I mean, they're really, really nice. I really like the Shimpo banding wheels. So I'm kind of cool with that. I, it's a little uh, organic. I'm going to leave it that way. Um, Let's see, it wanted to stick down a little bit. One of the things I used to keep it from skidding around on this surface, the wood would just skid on that. This is a little pad of uh, no, uh, what do they call that, no, no skid. Um, it's like a shelf liner or a pantry liner, um, drawer liner. They sell it in Walmart and everywhere else, you know, basic stores, big box stores. Um, so the, the hard part for me right now is getting this bowl out because it wants to stick. <coughs> All right, it's coming apart a little bit. Let me fix a couple areas. But I think I can get it now. So uh, I, again, popped it off a little prematurely, but isn't that cool how you can have this design, the linear design, the variety and shape um, kind of express it. I could continue on with this with a big coil all the way around the top. That would be kind of nice. Um, but I'm going to leave it on here to let it firm up a little bit. And I'm going to push it again back together so I can fix it off camera after, uh, after I cut off from here. So this assignment is not very difficult, easily done at home. You just have to roll out a bunch of coils. We don't have an extruder at home, I'm sure. I don't have one even in my studio. Just roll them out by hand, make a whole bunch of coils. I like to make all the coils ahead of time. 
Um, don't make them too thick. You know, mine are fairly thin. If you look, they're about half the thickness of a pinky. Um, so that's pretty thin. Um, and you can build a lot of stuff with this. So give it a try. And uh, you're going to make a coil bowl in your next assignment. Give that a try. If at first it doesn't work out, bowl your coils up and make another one. Um, the idea behind this is not to just put a check in the box that check I made a pinch pot check I made a coil pot or a coil bowl the idea is to make a piece of art um, even if you're just gonna ball it up and throw it away eventually um, and, and I hate to say that um, being in a situation where you know we're not likely to fire right away and if your pieces actually survive until next fall or some of you seniors won't be back, you're saying, what's the point? Um, the point is um, that you're, you actually are learning from the activity in the making, you're going through the problem solving, uh, making something that is a good design, a work of art, something that's beautiful um, in this case. And that's not always an easy thing. And uh, I think it's best to actually attempt that. Do the best you can and attempt to make something that's beautiful instead of just saying, you know, I made a, a whatever and there it is and give me credit for it. Um, I'd rather give you good credit um, for something that came out good and that you worked hard on um, or at least uh, took the time to think about it a little bit more. And so that's why I'm going to send you this Pinterest uh, link um, with my... Um, assignment for next week uh, so that you can look at some really nice coil pieces um, some of them are bowls made in the same ways that I've demonstrated for you and hopefully it'll find uh, you'll find that inspiring and it'll move you towards uh, making something really cool um, I hope this has been a good use of your time I know it's not uh, ideal it's not what we all expected at the beginning of the semester um, we are doing the best we can, I think. We could do more. Um, some people could do more. Um, but I, th I think we, uh, we're kind of shooting for the middle right now. Um, and uh, to try to do the best that you can do in the circumstance that I'm not there to help you. You might not have the greatest uh, facility to work in or a studio like mine where you can get good and dirty and, and not worry about it. So. Uh, do the best you can do but do try do try um, and uh, I'll leave you off with that um, thanks for watching this video and uh, I'll, I'll be in touch with you soon bye bye